Hey guys, welcome back to another Ender 2 video. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at some of the things that I have found that I need to adjust or fix before I can even start printing too much with this printer. So hopefully we can resolve all these issues and start enjoying the printer. So let's get to it. So in the last video, we fixed the Z axis here with the T rod and that worked out really good. So that was definitely a major issue here. But in this video, I want to start off with this bed here because it's, it's wobbling a lot. So just looking underneath, I thought maybe the wheels were loose and that's why it's, you know, kind of moving around. And so I didn't even know I had this problem until I was printing this tray here and one of my ends lifted on the print there, you can see. And all I did was just kind of like pushed on it. And as you can see, when I pushed on it, I think my bed was kind of like this. And when I pushed on it, you know, it whacked everything off. And this is why this didn't turn out so good, or you can see lines in it. In any case, we need to figure out what's going on with this thing. So let's take it off real quick here. So I want to attempt to show you what I see down there. So maybe a little hard to show on camera, but what's happening is this rubber wheel is loose in the bearing part. So the bearing moves around inside this. That's what's going on. If I pull and push, you can see that. So I'm thinking there's only a few things I can do. I can either try to tighten this up a little bit, or I can take this apart you know, and figure out the little wheels. And you can see how much that moves. You know, whenever you get a plate on here, obviously that pivots even more from end to end. And whenever you're, you know, done printing and you're trying to take a print out, you know, you're definitely gonna move this around. So not only are you constantly gonna need to level the bed straight, you know, you're always worried about, you know, this thing moving around while it's printing at the same time too, so. But what I wanna do is I wanna completely take it off this rail here. So we're just going to loosen this tensioner here. I'm going to pop the belt off, pull this tensioner completely out. All right, guys, so it appears to be that this single wheel here is somewhat worn out. I don't know if you can tell, but there's some in here. You can tell also on the inside there, filings there, whatever that is right there. It looks like the wheel is being worn out by the channel. You can see how much that moves. I know that doesn't seem a lot, but whenever you translate it over a plane, you know, it's a huge amount. It could be a millimeter or more, you know, on each end by the time you put the plate on. And that's what's happening. It's it's moving on the little plastic or whatever these are, rubber rollers. So this one's the worst, the one that's over here adjustable by itself. And the duels here, this one's moving around. And this one is still moving, but the least, like barely any. So I got the Warsh's wheel out, the one that's by itself, and here you can see it's the adjustable one. You can see how the eccentric nut works there. So, so yeah, here we have the wheel, and as you can see, guys, the bearings just fall out of there, which is good because now we can really glue them in really good because we can put glue inside the wheel and get them in there really good where they're not moving around for sure. So I got some of this E6000 stuff and I really like this thing. It's the same thing as Goop pretty much. And you can buy this stuff anywhere. The thing I like about it is that it turns rubber like a hard rubber after it cures. So technically we should be able to, you know, fuse this together nicely. So we don't need that much. We just need for our bearing to get set in there nicely. So let's go ahead and push it in there. So now we're just going to do the other side. I'm going to wipe some access off over here. Obviously, guys, you don't want to get it in the part that turns right there. Anywhere on the side is obviously fine. I'm just going to put this other one in there. Perfect. Make sure you're still spinning really good. And that's it, guys. That's how we're going to resolve our wheel problems. So I was very happy that these bearings just come out. I thought they were fused together somehow, like molded. But they're not, so these wheels just pop right off and the bearings. So this is definitely gonna fix our problem here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it to both of these and then we'll put it all back together. All right, so I glued them all up and put them back in the bracket. So now we're gonna wait about four to six hours before we install it. You know, that way it 
dries up pretty good. So the next issue I'm having is actually with the x-axis here and it's also the wheels. Hopefully you can see that there's the wheels are being shredded pretty hard. There's stuff that comes off of it and you can see there's a groove right there. I think what's going on is they're over tightened and all the wheels have this shredding problem. So the two on the top are shredding and you can tell here the bottom one is too pretty badly. I can just wipe off all that axis. So the wheels are getting wore out really fast. So I'm suspecting that it's over tightened and it's squishing too hard against the rail and eating into the wheels. So I think what we need to do is to adjust the eccentric nut, which is down here. But before I do that, I want to see if these wheels also play like the ones on the bed. So I'm just going to move this thing up and down. And as you can see, guys, it's the same issue here. They're way too loose, especially that one on the bottom there. I mean, it's just moving around. And it seems like the worst one is right here. Let's see, right this one right here. Let's see if I can show you hard to tell on camera but the bottom one and this one so I'm gonna go ahead and take this hot end off this whole bracket here and do the same thing I did with the other ones and just glue them all and then I'm gonna adjust it where it's not as tight or barely tight so I thought I was recording but I wasn't so what I've done is I loosened the tensioner and then popped the belts off the bottom here well I'm showing you the wrong one you know so we can slide this whole thing out here so. and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the Bowden tube connected because I still have filament running to the hot in here so so I'm gonna go ahead and take these wheels out and uh, glue them all like I did the other ones and you know that should fix all of our wobble issues all right so I got everything back on and the wheels are glued now so now we need to tension this so as you can see it's uh, really loose right now that eccentric nut in the back we just need to turn it until we're happy so it looks to be about right there so you want it to ride really, really easy, but you don't want it to jump on the rail at all either. So it's like a really fine line between too tight and too loose. So that looks just about right, right there. So after you adjust it, hold the nut in the very back because you don't want anything to, uh, you know, get tighter or looser. So and evenly just tighten it right there. And now we have a perfectly tightened, very smooth. You can see how smooth that is because it almost wants to roll on its own. And that's why it needs to be. So now we can go ahead and put the tensioner on and tighten the belt up. Okay, so we're done here on the X. Let's go back to our Y. So a pretty significant amount of time passed so we can go ahead and install this thing. And the best way to get to the eccentric nut back there is, you know, if you slide your bed all the way to the back, it's really easy to get to it from the back here. That's too loose now. I'm going to tighten it just a bit. Right when it starts to have the slightest resistance, like the slightest, that, that should do it. Because it should slide perfectly with no resistance almost. And at the same time, not have any play in it at all. Because then you're putting the minimum amount of pressure on those little wheels so they won't shred. But you're still getting a, you know, very solid, smooth motion. So once you're really happy with where that is, you can just slide it out and tighten it really good so it doesn't move on you and then we'll go ahead and double check make sure we're still good and we are still very good so I don't want to put too much lateral testing right now because the glue is still gluing alright so the bed is on and everything is back on so the next issue I have is actually kind of a weird issue and I don't know if this is just the design or just mine but this X switch here is too far that way that my nozzle goes off the bed all my prints are offset by about this much about that much so and I don't know how else to fix this but to move the switch this way so I'm thinking that maybe I should just you know unscrew these bolts and then drill a couple more to the far side there all right I'll go ahead and unplug it and that's what we got to work with here all right so we drilled a couple holes right there now we can put our little bolts in there and then we have our circuit here that'll just go right back on here and now our switch is on unfortunately I drill, didn't drill the holes too straight so it's a little bit tilting but that's okay alright so it's back on and now we have a new hole point for the X axis here so it's gonna come in and stop right there 
perfectly in line with the bed there where we need it. As you can see, that's the new home point now. All right, so that wasn't too hard and uh, hopefully that works. Except now I still need to plug it in and we should be good to go. I guess let's go ahead and test it out, see if it works. All right, so I'm gonna hit the out of home and hopefully everything will go back where it's supposed to be. And there you go guys, it's on the plate. So now that everything's back together and everything is super solid with grid motion, we can go ahead and print something and see what it turns out to be like. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna need is a little guide here for the filament because it always wants to touch the lead screw here. And also it'll hold this cable here so it's more neat around the uh, printer. So kind of excited to see what kind of print we will get. So I'm not gonna use any glue and let's hope we'll get a good adhesion there. So I am printing at 0.1 millimeters for a good quality there since it's a small part and it is gonna be solid. So. And I think the speed's only 40. So we'll see what that turns out. Should look pretty good. So it looks like everything is looking good. We'll see what happens. And it's done. To be honest, it kind of looks a little under extruded. Uh, it looks pretty good overall. Let's see if we can take it off. So it took one hour and 45 minutes to print this. There we go. That wasn't too hard at all actually. So the bottom looks pretty good. The side here looks great. The top looks pretty good. It might have been a little hot. I'm not sure. It's not perfect, but it is definitely up there. All right, so now that we printed, let's see if we can install it. So it looks like it's going to go right over here, just like that. So before I can even put it on, I need to pull the PLA out. So I got it preheated here. I'll push in there and then pull it out. It actually pulls out decently nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew these two bolts here. The good part is that they're pretty long, so the, so there's plenty of room for this new piece here. So now that they're out, all we gotta do is put this in, just like that. So everything is fitting perfectly. The bolt is going in the hole just like it needs to. Well guys, I'm pretty impressed. This piece fits in there perfectly, as you can see right there. So now this wire here, I guess I do need to put another zip tie, just like that. And so the piece around here will just click it right into this little channel here. Oh, look at that, guys. That's perfect. Now we got a nice, clean-looking Bowden tube with the wire going there. So not only is it, you know, making my cables looking nice, it's going to guide the filament where it doesn't touch the screw. All right, so let's put our filament in there. So you guys can see right there that, you know, it's about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters away from the screws now so and it's never gonna touch it now all right so I'm super super happy about that that was awesome so the print turned out great the functions great everything's good so there's a few you know iterations of this little bracket here but I really like this one it makes a lot of sense and the way it goes together it's really easy to so I'm gonna leave a credit here from where I got this in Thingiverse all right so let's summarize what we have done so we've fixed the bed and i'm going to do this for you guys even though it's not completely ready but you can see there is no movement as i'm moving this you can see the whole base is moving so we have made the bed ultra solid and that is a big deal guys so if you have any kind of flop in your bed do the glue in the wheels that will work like magic and obviously we you know did the same thing for this guy here so now we could have done it also here but I, this thing barely has anything, so it wasn't really necessary. And this is such a slow climber. Eventually, I might do it because, you know, as you start climbing, let's say if you're going to do something really tall, it's, you know, ultra important that these are also super stable. So, but yeah, I think that's going to be super helpful for people that have the same issue as I had with the wobble, you know, and, the, and you can't really figure out what to do. And if you tighten those eccentric nuts too tight, you're going to shred the wheels. And that's the issue we had up here, which, you know, we were shredding wheels. So hopefully we're not going to see any more shredding. Um, after this print, I don't see any signs of shredding at all. 
I think it's important to go ahead and adjust all these things. Even if you get the printer new and everything's fine, go ahead and still adjust them because they might be too tight. Because when you, when you put them on, you can't really tell, you know, if, if it's too tight or not. It's hard to tell unless you're someone that puts printers together all the time. You're not going to be able to know. But in any case, I'm glad I've picked that up before it was too late and I had my wheels shredded. So yeah, guys, this printer has definitely taught me a lot of things already. And because I have to, you know, fix all these little issues, you know, I'm starting to understand a lot more of what's going on because the slightest shake the slightest wobble will show up in the prints so the other thing we did was x switch here and before it was going way too far so but now it's perfect it just homes right here on the edge of the bed you know and then does its thing well i hope you guys are enjoying these videos as much as i enjoy making them and if you have any suggestions or comments please leave them down below so i think the printer is at the state where i can start printing things and all the little things seem to be worked out now the bed is flat and everything is nice and smooth so we're going to be printing a bunch of stuff and taking a look at the quality of you know like a benchy and things like that so if you're enjoying videos like this guys and you want to see more and you're not already subscribed then hit that subscribe button all right well thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace